Hello, my name is Maria Miller from MathMammoth.com. In this lesson, we're going to study random sampling. Now, what is sampling? It is a method of studying something when you cannot study the whole population. Let's say you want to study what do the US people think about this. And you cannot go and ask all those millions of people what they think of that thing. So, you use a sample. And we're studying random sample. What is a random sample? There are two important requirements for a sample to be a random sample. And one is the randomness. Each member of the population has an equal chance of being selected to the sample. So when you're choosing your sample, you need to use some kind of a random method of choosing those that will be part of the sample. For example, if you're making a poll, you want to find out what do the people in the US think about cats. Then you have to devise a method of selecting a few people randomly from the whole United States population and then ask them about cats. And the other important feature is external selection. The respondents are chosen by the researcher, by you, and not self-selected. For example, in polls this works this way, that whoever is doing the poll selects those who become part of the sample. The people themselves shouldn't be able to choose if they take part or not. And this example hopefully will make this clear. Now, in 2008, in the presidential campaign, Obama versus McCain, there was several polls, of course, done. And here are two, AOL poll and Gallup poll. The AOL poll was done on AOL website. And anybody who came into the website could take this little poll. And the sample size, people who took the poll, was 40,000. And the results are here as far as these two. McCain 53% and Obama 41%. The Gallup poll was done by phone and the sample size was 700 people and the results McCain 34%, Obama 46%. And it turns out that this poll is more accurate than this, even though the sample size is huge here and the sample size here is much less. The reason being the method. The AOL poll is, you could call it a convenience poll. People who came to the site could take the poll, so that makes it the self-selection method. Whoever comes there can select themselves to become part of the sample, right? So this poll does not fulfill this requirement. Whereas this one was done by phone, it was after a debate and uh, they chose randomly to call some people and ask them which one they thought did better in the debate. So this one was done with a scientific method using a real random sample, and it is more accurate than this. Now let's study here. Which method is best for obtaining a random sample? Let's say you want to study the shopping habits of people who are shopping at this store, Xmart. And here's a few methods that come to your mind that you could obtain your sample because you cannot interview all the people who come to the store, right? So, let's say you stand in the pop drink aisle, interviewing people, asking them about their shopping habits. That would be one possibility. But is it truly going to be a random sample? Now, let's look here. Does each person who shops in that store have the same chance of being selected to your sample if you're standing in the pop drink aisle? You know, let's say all those health nuts who never visit that aisle, they don't have a chance of being selected to your sample. And the same would be true if you went and stood in the health food aisle. Then those who only buy junk foods would never be selected to your sample. And the same is true no matter what place in the store you chose, you know, the milk products or whatever, you would be excluding some people from being selected to your sample. Now let's see this one. Give people who exit the store a form to fill in and mail in later on. Now this one avoids this problem, okay? This method avoids the problem we had here. Now everybody, whether they are health nuts or whether they just buy junk food, they have a chance of being selected because everybody exits the store. 
But this one has the problem of self-selection because you give them the form and then they choose whether they fill it in or not. Now three, call people you have chosen randomly from the store's customer database. Now this is the one that most closely is a random sample. Okay, you are going to do the choosing and then you randomly choose from the database. So as long as all the shoppers are in the database, then all the shoppers have an equal chance of being selected. Now it's possible that the store has a customer database and then it has some customers that come in that are not in the database. So even this one might not be truly a random sample, but it is the best of these methods. The last method, interview people who exit the store, is the second best method of these four. There, you're not going to use self-selection like here, and also you're trying to make it as random as possible. Okay, well done with this lesson and I hope it was helpful.